Hello and welcome to this very special finale of Fantasy Booking Warfare. We have got the winner of the Fantasy Booking Warfare Tournament. He beat Alex Queen of the Ring. He beat Luke Owen. He beat Laurie Blake. He is the Fantasy Booking Warfare Champion, Ollie D -D -D Davis. Look at him dab away. He is dabbing Kato right there. How are you feeling? Not confident. Of all the bookings I've done for this Fantasy Booking Warfare tournament, this is the least confident I've been. It was a real struggle. I think Adam's going to destroy me. Well, let me take you back to January 2020, a time when bats didn't seem all that scary. The word COVID-19 was just hearsay amongst those people in far off countries. <laughs> and a young Adam Blompier walked into the WrestleTalk offices and said, guys, I'm not going to introduce myself because you already know who I am. And now it's time for me to batter Ollie Davis at Fancy Booking because I'm brilliant at it. It's Adam, Blom it's Adam Blompier. How are you feeling? Hello. <laughs> you may be a king, but what is a king next to a god? Um, I'm going to beat you probably anyway, just because <laughs> I do the bookings. Uh, you could literally wipe the floor with me. And you might. I've taken a direction with this where I could legitimately lose. But that would depend on your audience uh, not going with the simple popular vote. Which, well, you're here, Ollie, so <laughs> that's not hugely likely. I don't know if that's completely fair. I think Ollie was, you know, I think he had a better booking than Alex. Um, I don't, I'm not sure you could say he had a better booking than my gut angle. One. Yeah, it was pretty, uh, it's pretty, pretty flawless when you when you think about it. And he, I think he did better than Ollie did, uh, better than Laurie did uh, in the finals. I think Ollie's got here on his own merits um, on, on this one. Adam. I think you're being very unfair to your challenger. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, I'm just doing. I'm just doing my best to add a bit of intrigue in it, because everyone. Thing is, if as long as you re release the vote at the, at the same time as the video, I've already won. So hey, Adam, I've heard that there's no problem with doing that. I don't think a single person has said that we should delay it by an hour. Shut up, Laurie. You don't know anything. <laughs> Right, okay, well, let's get into this because your topic was quite, you know, this all started from the fact that you two uh, fancy booked the Royal Rumble 2020, and now here we are. It is twice in a lifetime. So your topic was twice in a lifetime, which we all know was so good for CM Punk. Um, <laughs> Ali, what was your, uh, you said to me last week, I don't remember how the story went the first time round, and I don't really know what to do now. How did you feel going into this? Not confident. I couldn't find a hook. I think I'm good at booking stuff that hasn't happened yet. I haven't actually booked anything from the past. Uh, I find it quite limiting. And yes, all those things do not fill me with confidence here. Plus, I couldn't really remember what happened. I just remember it being rubbish. So what you're saying is you were trying to look for a hook and but you couldn't put hook into the storyline, which really would have given you some votes. Yeah, it really would. If it, I, I mean, part of me was like, maybe I could just say in my fantasy book and <laughs> second in a lifetime never happened. And it's it's happening now in 2021. He'd have been 10, send in <laughs> hook. hook. Uh, Adam, what about you? Famously, you loved this storyline. Oh man, I've been looking forward to this. Uh, no, no, this, yeah, this is, it, it was a load of old sh**. Uh, so I, but also it's very, very difficult. So uh, call me controversial, and this is not too much of a spoiler, but I haven't really rebooked twice in a lifetime. I've rebooked WrestleMania 29 because oh, I don't dang. think you can do twice in a lifetime. I think fundamentally the concept is broken. So that may come to bite me in the ass. I what well, so your 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 method of doing this was to ignore the plot you were given and just do your own thing. I've rebooked twice in a lifetime. I've rebooked it so it doesn't happen. <laughs> hmm. Well, see, I could have booked it for twenty twenty two. 
You, I mean, you could actually, yeah, having said that, you absolutely you could have done. Now that we think about it, if Adam was just like, oh, I'm just going to rebook. Do you want to do WrestleMania X7 I mean, while you're I at re it? I rebooked the year. I, I rebooked the thing that happened. I you said, this year. doesn't happen. This happens instead. Well, I mean, I mean, you're going to win anyway, so it doesn't really matter, right? <laughs> so, like, no, no, come on now. That's, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. I just, okay. I just like, this, this is a fundamentally broken idea. So here's my replacement of it. I have got a very glittery D20 here. Would you like to use the glittery one? Uh, do you want the, the solid purple one? Uh, what else could I use? Nice see-through red one. You don't, we, we don't need to, the, the, the purple one, the purple one. The oh, purple one, good, <laughs> good choice, an excellent choice. Um, uh, and Because uh, Adam's really odd about this uh, booking thing. I'm gonna give him the odd numbers and Ollie, you can be the even numbers. Who's gonna go first? It is an eight. We are starting with Ollie Davis. The Rock has just beaten John Cena in the main event of WrestleMania 28. Cena is broken, sitting on the ramp. He tried to beat The Rock with his own people's elbow, and that arrogance cost him the match. Someone does Chapter research. Chapter one, loyalty and betrayal. On the post-WrestleMania Raw, Cena finally comes out to address the WWE Universe. Let's go, Cena! Cena sucks! He tries to cut a babyface promo smiling, but he's drowned out by the crowd. Let's go, Cena! Cena sucks! Did the better man win, he asks, or did the better man lose it for himself? Let's go, Cena! Cena, shut up! He suddenly shouts, his voice breaking at the end. He composes himself. The Rock was once in a lifetime, he admits, but I'm brighter than lightning and these people are louder than thunder. Let's make this twice in a lifetime. Fight me at Extreme Rules, Rock. But it's not Dwayne who comes out. It's Brock Lesnar who flattens him with an F5. John Laurinaitis explains he's brought Brock back to give WWE that ruthless aggression again. And we'll decide who's still got it at Extreme Rules with Lesnar versus Cena. It's total dominance from Brock, throwing Cena around for 15 whole minutes, but Cena, in a last shot of adrenaline, hits an AA. He could have it won, but instead, he slides off his never give up armband. He looks right down the lens and does the rocks just bring it taunt. He goes for the people's elbow, but Lesnar hoists him up into an F5 to win. Cena's obsession with the rock has cost him again. The next night on Raw is the same as after WrestleMania. Cena comes out smiling like nothing's happened, but the crowd is still all, let's go Cena. Cena sucks. He lost to The Rock, he lost to Brock, but he's all about never giving up for all of you people. I'm calling you out, Rock, for SummerSlam. Come get some. But nobody comes out to get anything. It's just the crowd getting louder and louder and louder. Let's go, Cena! Cena sucks! He's visibly rattled and his eyes moisten and he says off mic, screw this, and goes to the corner, burying his head in his little hustle, loyalty and respect towel. He wipes it down his face and he re-emerges a changed man. Okay, new rule. He pulls off his bright green never give up armband and reverses it, it's black. I see you wearing one of these armbands, you have my loyalty. I get in this ring for you, I leave it all in here for you, I will beat the rock for you. Everyone else, I ain't doing this sh anymore. I can see you and you can go to hell. Just like Diesel and Bret Hart before him, Cena has turned heel if you want him to be. Chapter 2. Hustle. Cena, dressed in a black t-shirt, cap and boots to match his armband now, calls out The Rock week after week and cuts promos on the smarks that cheer the great one. You think Dwayne's watching? He's laughing all the way to his private bank on a Hollywood lot. But The Rock might face him if he's WWE Champion, so he'll just have to win Money in the Bank. It's the night of Money in the Bank, but The Miz has picked up an injury. Laurinaitis finds a replacement, but they've got to fly in. It's short notice. The match will have to start without them, but he guarantees when they arrive, you'll know the true meaning of the people's power. At the end of the match, Cena is the lone conscious person. He puts one hand on the bottom rung when Laurinaitis introduces the last entrant. If you smile, the rock struts down Ugh, wearing his Hollywood glasses, steps on Cena's striving hand, and easily climbs the ladder to unhook the briefcase. The rock is now the holder of the money in the bank. 
contract. <laughs> the next that. night on Raw, we have the debut <laughs> of the mega gimmick, Corporate <laughs> Hollywood Rock, with a fawning Laurinaitis by his side. This is full Maple Leaf Suck Rock, MJF Rock, using every cheap heat trick in the book. But Cena interrupts him, now the serious tweener, and lays down the challenge again. Come, get some. But Rock says he's got a whole lot more money to make for his bank in Hollywood. And the next time you'll see me, it'll be to cash it in. This brings out the current WWE champion, CM Punk, who stares down Rock. Rock is stonewall serious, but then flashes that million dollar smile. Have fun, kids. The People Powers champion will come back. Finally. The Rock leaves Punk and Cena in the ring. Cena's looking at the WWE Championship over Punk's shoulder. He now sees that as his way to face The Rock. They get in each other's faces with echoes of Money in the Bank 2011, but Laurinaita says no! The people want fresh faces in the main event. Punk goes into a title feud with Lesnar, main event in SummerSlam, while Cena is knocked down the card. He's lost to Rock. He's lost to Brock. He lost Money in the Bank. Cena now has to work his way up from the bottom, wrestling and pay-per-view openers against WWE's younger stars. It's practically his US title open challenge run from 2016, just without a title on the line. Cena wrestles meanly and aggressively, but the crowd shake him too often. He puts over the likes of Dolph Ziggler, Daniel Bryan, and Cody Rhodes. Eventually, Punk passes him in a corridor backstage, and he double takes. Didn't you used to be John Cena? All the while, Cena doesn't take his eyes off the title on Punk's shoulder. That's the fire Cena needed. He starts to win. He wrestles on every Raw, SmackDown, pay-per-view, Sunday Night Heat, I don't know, whatever. He gets victories over Jericho and Triple H. By Christmas, he's on a winning streak. He's no longer getting distracted by the fans, just with head down hustle. Punk wants to fight Cena for the belt, but Laurinaita says no. Instead, they can have a non-title match on the first Raw of 2013. While it's not officially for the championship, with both men's histories, it unofficially is. They wrestled their terrific Raw TV match from this same year. Punk hits a pile driver. There's a double down after 15 brutal minutes. And that's when Laurinaitis reveals his plan. It's time for The Rock to cash that check. Rock walks down, glasses on, just like Money in the Bank, and stands over a near unconscious Cena. He just flips the bird instead of taking off his armband and starts to run the ropes for a people's elbow, but Punk picks him up and hits a GTS. Laurinaitis is shocked. He's just accidentally made it a three-way for the title, which John Cena is in. He tries to reverse the cash in as Punk stands up straight into an AA, but Rock has recovered enough to push John out the ring and make the pin himself. The Rock is now the WWE Champion. Chapter 3. Respect. Contempt. The following Raw sees Rock have his first title defense against Yoshi Tatsu. He squashes him in a segment that's about 95% Rock concert. Now he's defended the belt within 30 days. He doesn't have to wrestle again until WrestleMania. But who will face him? The Royal Rumble has CM Punk out at number two. Cena enters at number eight. They are the eternal feud, and their Iron Man performances see them through to the final two. GTS attempt reversed into AA attempt, but Punk grabs the top rope and pulls them both over at the same time. Both Punk and Cena have won the Rumble match, and they're both choosing the Rock. This just won't do for Laurinaitis, who books Cena versus Punk at Elimination Chamber to decide just one number one contender with himself as the special guest referee. He knows what you want, people's power. The Rock is out there on commentary where he keeps changing his mind who he wants to face at Mania. Laurinaitis flips between fast counts or hesitations depending on what Rock signals. Punk and Cena eventually have enough of this, laying out The Rock and putting Laurinaitis through the announcer's table, writing Laurinaitis off pretty much forever to a double DQ. The next night on Raw, Rock is ecstatic. Because it was a double DQ, he gets to choose his opponent at WrestleMania 29. It'll be twice in a lifetime as The Rock defends his WWE Championship against Yoshi Tatsu again. But there's a new <laughs> sheriff in town. It's Stone Cold Steve Austin, who's the interim general manager, and he declares at Mania, it will be The Rock versus John Cena versus CM Punk in a triple threat. 
finally the main event of WrestleMania 29. CM Punk gets living color to perform live for him again. The Rock is accompanied out by Arnie, Sylvester Stallone, and Bruce Willis. It's Planet Hollywood as a faction, because in this <laughs> fantasy booking universe, The Rock will star in Expendables 3 out the following year. And Cena <laughs> what have you done? to a single piano playing My Time Is Now, a stripped back contrast to The Rock's success. He poses with his head down and taps his black armband as the camera pans around nearly every person in the stadium is wearing one. The match begins exactly how their last three-way ended. Punk immediately sure. hits a GTS on the rock and turns round into a Cena AA for a near fall. The match is booked like Paul Heyman after he saved up all the finishers. In the final sequence though, Rock batters Punk with the title belt, knocking him out, and then stands over John's body for the people's elbow. But he pauses, thinks, and starts Cena's five-knuckle shuffle routine instead. He runs the rope, just like Cena did against him the year before, but runs into a waiting AA for the one, two, three. John Cena is your new WWE Champion, burying his rock grudge, setting up his big feud of 2013. Cena versus the man who wasn't pinned, CM Punk. I mean... <laughs> Do you know what? For someone who came into the scene, he's not very confident. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, I thought it was really good. Yeah, um, it was really you did, good. You, you did make WrestleMania 29 look like a massive funeral in its <laughs> main event. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> wearing a black armband. It's like, yeah, geez. yeah. It, it felt like towards the end, you were like, oh, this hasn't got enough pizzazz to it. Um, Steve Austin's there. Um, Schwarzenegger's totally. there. Um, <laughs> Stallone's there. <laughs> Not enough pizzazz. That he is exactly what happened. He turned The Rock and Cena heel in the same year. <laughs> it's not enough though, is it? I need to get Bruce Willis out there. It was... was Cena ever fully a heel though? Yes. Well, he never cheated. <laughs> he's. I mean, he's got a point. He didn't really cheat during the few, did like during the year, <laughs> did he? He told the people never they could cheated. go screw. How could he? He told the people who booed him they could go to hell splitting hairs he, he became he became the shadow universe version of himself he literally he literally his colors went black it, it wasn't a you people promo it was a you specifically promo. <laughs> you specific you promo. and you not you 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 in the back you're all right but next to you <laughs> No, 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 the, the next person. You're cool. Yeah, you. You're cool. Your son can go f himself. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you did stretch reality slightly. <laughs> not not with Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Bruce Willis, and, and Steve. I mean, it was just with everyone in the crowd is wearing the I black know. armbands. <laughs> I, love, I love it when you book the crowd to do something. <laughs> I know that that didn't that didn't occur to me until it happened. <laughs> and I saw both your faces, and I was like, "But I hate it when people do that anyway, and they book crowd reactions or everyone's you know, going crazy." Match here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have a great match. <laughs> yeah. Twenty minutes, the match is great. I've got to be honest though, I did the Yoshi Tatsu joke, and I thought, "I just yeah, that's that's the real main event." It's so good. <laughs> it really I was really good. good. The twice in a lifetime thing, I was like, "Oh, this is such a good punchline. This is really good." I thought the reveal yeah. was it was superb. I, I I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it. And actually, you also fixed one of the other fundamental issues of Twice in a Lifetime, which is that Cena beat Brock on Brock's first night back. Yes. So like that crazy, that really really smart move there. If anything, you got my you got my vote just for that. You know, you want to know what I really. I mean, I love Yoshitatsu. Should have been the hurricane. Bring the hurricane back for okay. it. Mm -hmm. How much? Where did you find like the research for this? Did you just find like the WrestleMania 29 card and just pick out the battle royal? Well, for, no, it was pretty much I just had uh, WWE's pay per view calendar open on Wikipedia for that year. Whenever I wanted to figure something out, I'd go into that pay per view and read the story recap. <laughs> and I watched Adam. I rewatched Adam's. Uh, seen a last run and rewatched Laurie and Sully's booking just in case I went over any previously heel Cena ideas that people had already done. Well, the Rock is Mr. The Rock is Mr. Money in the Bank is a that's huge amount of fun. That's, yeah, that's I think awesome. that's your that's your killer app here. The Rock, um, Holly, Hollywood Rock's really difficult because he is actually Hollywood now. So like, can mm. can he be a bellend? That's my only thing that I I struggle with the booking is the idea of Rock being heel. Because I don't, I don't see it. Just, I, I kind of like it though. 
I like it. I like the concept of it. Just like I like the concept of kind of like Rock and Cena turning heel in the same year <laughs> under Vincent Kennedy McMahon. While Punk is also a heel. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you Punk's just... your, your one true right main event baby face apparently according to this you're selling <laughs> wrestlemania on face cm punk according to i mean hey it could happen now hey, and do you know what, Adam? <laughs> or the entire crowd were wearing armbands so it clearly works yeah you just have to book you just have to book the crowd to boo the rock <laughs> yeah. it's boo easy. him boo him i do like the idea though of corporate hollywood rock with Laurenitis as well, like then there's a lot of fun in there. But yeah, I, I swear I thought I was really good. I don't think you should be as unconfident as you were. I think you should be walking into this with your head held high because Adam's is 17 minutes long. All of the confidence I had is pure kayfabe, by the way, because genuinely I <laughs> completely get why after what you're about to see, people vote for yours because you rebooked twice in a lifetime and more power to you. Ollie, it's Christmas just didn't want to so i did this instead. <laughs> well let's see what it is the lights fade up on the rock and john cena sitting in the back of a police car both men are in handcuffs cena sports a black eye lights from an ambulance flash across the concrete walls of the parking garage around them washing everything in crime scene red and accident blue the Rock looks at Cena. Cena looks at The Rock. The Rock says, it seemed a lot simpler last year, didn't it? Cena says, you got that right. Cena looks out of the car at something in the distance. What do you think that is? The Rock looks too. That's a dead man walking. <laughs> We start at the Royal Rumble 2013. It's the main event, the People's Pebble versus Chunky Monkey Punk. The Shield get involved. They do the little restart thing. You can keep that. The Rock catches Punk in a spine buster. But before he can hit the People's Elbow, he tries to hit it. But Punk catches him and locks him in an anaconda vice. The Rock struggles, doesn't tap, but passes out. Ultimately, Punk retains twice the next night on raw the rock comes out to talk to the people no excuses i got beat call it ring rust call it time call it whatever you want i couldn't get the job done but the rock knows that he can he says i'm putting cm punk on notice your time is running out and the rock is declaring himself the number one content and suddenly he's interrupted by someone's music bow down to the Bow down to the king. Do do on your knees. Go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Triple H's music. This game walks down to the ring in his COO suit and tie. And he says, Rock, no one in that locker room knows how much you've done for this company more than me. Because I did it all right alongside you. This is a new generation. And guess what, Rock? You don't make the matches around here. Uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, you got beat uh, twice. Uh, so why don't you leave the WWE up to the people who never left the WWE? See, this is my home. This is all I've ever wanted. But right now, what I want the most is for you to show me the respect I'm owed and get out of my ring. The Rock smiles. He says, look, the Rock understands that perhaps you're still a little sore after Brock Lesnar broke your arm twice. Uh, so The Rock's going to give you this one. Rock turns to leave, but one last thing. Speaking as someone who's seen the chaperone, this isn't all you've ever wanted. This is all you've ever had. Triple H removes oh. his jacket, his cufflinks, rolls up his sleeve. Hey, 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 says The Rock. Stephanie will never forgive The Rock if I send you home with your head shoved straight up your candy bottom. So, hey, look, after 15 years, put her there. They shake hands before The Rock says, but just so you know, after what happened at the Rumble last night, you have picked the wrong night to piss me off. Pulls him in. Rock hits the rock bottom on Triple H. Two weeks later, Triple H comes out on Raw dressed in his daddiest 
outfit, which is a, a motorhead t-shirt, long sleeve yeah. denim jacket, a short sleeve leather jacket, and then a <laughs> denim vest on top of that. Trip says, now there's nothing sadder than a man out of time when someone doesn't know when to call it quits. The Rock's been wrestling on borrowed time, frankly, since 2002. And Triple H says he's gonna send him home for good one last time. Triple H challenges The Rock to a match at WrestleMania 29. He says, I'll be waiting at Elimination Chamber, Rock. Why don't you show up and give me your answer? Elimination Chamber, Triple H and Rock agree to a match. Both of them talking about how each other refuses to let go of their wrestling prime. Triple H was crushed by Brock Lesnar. The Rock was beaten by CM Punk, the current WWE champion. They're two old cowboys who can't stop gunslinging. Triple H strikes first, but runs into The Rock's spine buster. However, before The Rock can hit the people's elbow on trips, he runs into Stephanie McMahon, who stops him, slaps him in the face. The Rock smiles, then hits The Rock bottom on Stephanie. On Raw, Triple H is beside himself. No matter what happens at WrestleMania, he says, I am still going to be with WWE. Yeah. I'm never going to leave. And The Rock isn't welcome here anymore. No more popping in for a chat whenever there's a movie that needs promoting. No more main events whenever you feel like it, Rock. I want you at WrestleMania. And if you don't win, I want you to quit wrestling for good. The Rock agrees, but only if Triple H does the same. Triple H versus The Rock, career versus career. The loser never wrestles again. They do a contract signing on the go home raw. Rock and trips put pen to paper when Steph shows up with a bunch of cops. That's him, officers. That's the man who attacked me. Rock then tries <laughs> to fight off all the police, but is arrested, bundled into the back of a police car where he sees John Cena sitting there with a black eye. At WrestleMania 29, the finish of the match sees the referee go down, The Rock again going for the people's elbow on Triple H. Stephanie rushes into the ring, lies on her husband, crying, begging, pleading for Rock not to hit it. Rock hits both Stephanie and Triple H with a people's elbow, but then he turns around into a sweet chin music from Shawn Michaels. Triple H and Rock get up. Trips hits the pedigree. One, two, three. That's the end of The Rock's in-ring career. And it's also low-key the beginning to the authority storyline. See, for the longest time, Triple H refuses to admit he's heel, that what he was doing was right for WWE all along, which leads into SummerSlam and the official turn. It also adds a little bit more juice to every time The Rock kind of comes back for a promo and encounters Triple H, like, for example, at WrestleMania 31. He's the man who retired him there will always be bad blood between them. <laughs> we start at the Royal Rumble 2013. John Cena is on a road to redemption after losing at Mania 27, losing to Punk at Money in the Bank 2011, losing to The Rock at Mania 28, losing at SummerSlam 2012, at Survivor Series 2012. He really needs this. Cena enters number 22, cleans houses, wobble doo, and the like, when suddenly he's grabbed from behind by suddenly appearing on the ring apron, Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman just grabs Cena and doing his best to kind of try to throttle him. Cena fights him off, but then turns around into a bro kick from Sheamus, which sends John Cena sailing over the top rope to the outside. John Cena is eliminated from the 2013 Royal Rumble. Paul Heyman just slicks back what's left of his hair, saunters up the ramp, all as the Rumble timer counts down to whoever's entering at number 28. Backstage, Cena confronts Punk, tells him that if you want to do something, Jack, instead of sending your messenger or your manager to do your dirty work, how about you strap on D's nuts, hold up a packet of airline peanuts, and you do it yourself, Jack. Punk looks at Cena saying, look, I hate you, and you don't have any reason to believe me, but 
I didn't tell Paul to do that. Punk then walks away. We fast forward to the Elimination Chamber. Again, a must-win situation for Jonathan Cena. Every fifth word that Cena says in promos leading up to this match is redemption, 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 <laughs> WrestleMania redemption. The main event of the show is an Elimination Chamber match to determine the WWE Champion heading into WrestleMania 29. Randy Orton versus Sheamus versus Ryback versus Big Show versus CM Punk versus John Cena. Cena and Punk start the chamber as the first two men and they go the distance. Everyone else is eliminating. It's Punk and Cena right at the end. The classic rivals as the last two competitors. Cena and Punk are exhausted. Cena hits an avalanche AA, but as he lies on the mat, trying to crawl towards Punk, Brock Lesnar strides down, accompanied by Paul Heyman, rips the chamber door open, hits an F5 to John Cena, drags CM Punk, plops him on top. Punk pins Cena, retains the title. Heyman informs Cena that John has something that belongs to Brock Lesnar. At Extreme Rules 2012, Lesnar's first match back with WWE, John Cena beat Brock. Cena has the W over Brock Lesnar, and that will not stand. Brock had diverticulitis, but he's better now, and he's going to extract that W from John Cena's soul at WrestleMania 29. For the next few weeks, every time Cena tries to hustle loyalty and respect and advantage over the beast, Brock hands him his bottom and then stuffs it one of those little towels up there. Paul Heyman brings up the fact that Cena's <laughs> lost two WrestleMania main events in a row. Brock keeps beating Cena down. He punches him. Straight in the eye, bloodying his mouth again and F5-ing him onto the concrete floor. Heyman says Cena's lost what made him special, whereas Brock is just getting stronger. In order to conquer the beast, Cena will have to go to a place he's never been before. And frankly, Heyman says, John, you don't have the guts to go to that place. On the go-home roar, Cena, sporting a black eye, attacks Brock Lesnar in the parking lot with a lead pipe. He smashes Lesnar around the backstage area through a window before wrapping a steel chain around his wrist and using it to lock Lesnar in the STF. People try to pry Cena off Brock, but Cena starts throwing hands with the refs and the official. He's lost his mind. Someone shouts, call security, call the police. Cena is placed under arrest and put in the back of a cop car in the parking lot. He's watching some commotion happening at the other end of that parking lot when the door opens and The Rock, also in handcuffs, is bundled in. At WrestleMania 29, Brock Lesnar beats John Cena, not in as one-sided a fashion as their SummerSlam 2014 match, but Brock wins, extending Cena's losing streak another year, setting the stage for, one year later, WrestleMania 30, John Cena versus The Undertaker, undefeated streak versus mm. defeated streak. And I would absolutely oh. turn Cena heel here, cheating to finally get his WrestleMania win back and break The Undertaker's undefeated streak. <laughs> We start at the Royal Rumble 2013. Paul Heyman walks to the back, clears the ramp just as the timer ticks down from 10 to 1. And out comes number 28, which is Gong. Undertaker makes a surprise return to the Rumble, heads down to the ring and clears house, last eliminating Ryback to become the winner of the 2013 Royal Rumble. We fast forward to the Elimination Chamber match. Brock Lesnar leaves the building. Cena has been helped out of the chamber. CM Punk is dazed, confused, but celebrating when suddenly, gong, the lights go out, come back on to reveal Taker standing behind Punk. He scoops up the WWE Champion, delivers the tombstone, and then does this. 
ah, it really hurts your eyes doing that. The match is set. CM Punk puts his run as champion, which will be over 500 days by this point, 504 come WrestleMania 29 to be exact, against Undertaker's 20 and 0 undefeated streak. Someone's streak will come to an end. And honestly, keep much of their feud the same because it was one of the best feuds going into WrestleMania 29, including all the dicey stuff around the death of William Moody, aka Paul Bearer. I just wanted to tell you I'm sorry for your loss at WrestleMania. It's chef's kiss. I mean, maybe Punk doesn't have to use Paul Bearer's ashes as like a dry shampoo, but it can be near the knuckle. It is crazy unique heat and suited to what this is, a WrestleMania main event. CM Punk tells Taker that even though Taker is supposed to be this great legend, 20 and 0, here's another number for you. 238. Now, as the total number of combined days that Undertaker has been WWE Champion across his entire career, I, I, am about to double that. Because unlike you, unlike your manager, my title reign is immortal. On the Go Home episode of Raw, CM Punk holds a ceremony celebrating making it to 500 days as WWE Champion. Undertaker crashes the ceremony, has CM Punk by the throat when he hears a car's horn. He turns around and Paul Heyman is driving a hearse down to the ring. In the back is a flower arrangement in the name Paul. Taker snarls, Paul is right, and goes after Heyman, clobbering him, trying to stuff him into the back of the hearse when CM Punk attacks him from behind with the urn. He loads Taker into the hearse, drives it to the back, to the parking lot. He parks it up, gives Taker another crack on the head before jumping in a truck and plowing it into the side of the hearse. An ambulance arrives, and as paramedics stretch a Taker into the back of the ambulance, CM Punk stands there and smirks. The smirk is wiped from his face when Taker sits up as the ambulance starts to drive away. From the back seat of a nearby police car, Cena points out Punk, to which Rock responds, that's a dead man walking. At WrestleMania 29, The Undertaker beats CM Punk to take the streak to 21-0 and end the 504-day title reign of CM Punk. He places the belt on the mat, places the urn next to the belt, and then gestures at them both. <laughs> On Raw, Taker can describe it as one last ride for Paul. Essentially give a eulogy for Paul Bearer and then vacate the title because Undertaker is going away to heal up for a year. Which then leaves just one thing. My favorite thing. A tournament to crown a new WWE champion. Merry Christmas. <coughs> Bravo. Well done. Bravo. I mean, again, I didn't rebook twice in a lifetime. You did that. I just rebooked WrestleMania 29. And why? gosh, I talk a lot. Huh? Why, why, why did you not want to book twice in a lifetime? <laughs> Closing the title. <laughs> I just didn't want to see him wrestle again. I just, I'm, don't get me wrong, like, it's because they did the exact same story. They just whacked the title on it. That made it uninteresting. You could have Rock and Cena wrestle again. I just didn't want to do it. So what just was your, what, what was your sort of like thinking then into going into this of like, basically you looked at the, the big three matches on the show and was just like, I'm just gonna switch some of this round. <laughs> Basically. Can, can I can I guess what happened? Yeah. Did you watch Pulp Fiction recently? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'll never tell. <laughs> I, I, I really, really got a kick out of that. There wasn't enough, that was not enough feet in it uh, to really be a, a Pulp Fiction reference. Mm, no, quite right. Um, yeah, I, I kind of just wanted to... Um, yeah, I, I wanted, like, what is the thing that can kind of satisfy everything? Because I wanted to, I like, the thing that I thought was interesting about Cena is this idea of redemption and pushing him to his breaking point, which I think me and Ollie both kind of latched onto. But they just didn't really do, like, the way they did it didn't kind of, like, pay that off in any way. Uh, obviously, The Rock, it's his kind of last match, so kind of just make a thing of that. 
And then also try and keep CM Punk in your company for a little bit longer by giving him the main event at WrestleMania that he had earned by that point mm -hmm. and doing something, you know, because him and Taker had the best match on the card. It was basically just like, yeah, looking at the card and being just like, oh, this is the way round to do that. And then adding some Tarantino-esque uh, smoke and mirrors to it. I love the idea of that go home roar or wherever it is it's in the, the story. Stupidest where go it's home like roar. all those mega angles happen. There's a truck into the hearse. Rock is like, was it slapping Stephanie that he got the arrest for? Uh, well, or that was at the least stuff. he fights them all off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fighting the police uh, yeah. and yeah. Cena going crazy backstage. I really, yeah. yeah, I loved all the Rock Triple H stuff. And that was, that was some really, really mm. good. Like, that is way more interesting than anything that actually The Rock did when he came back. Yeah. I mean, I just, yeah, I just thought like kind of what is an interesting <clears throat> to do with all of these players rather than necessarily try to retell a rock and Cena story, which to be fair, Ollie did. So it depends what you well, want. Well, I think that's what it, it comes though. down to. Yeah. Th it might be. Did Adam satisfy the brief of the video? Well, what does Luke think? You're the, you're yeah. the arbiter. I mean, it, it's, I know it's, yeah. I know it's the people's decision, but like, where do you, where does your heart? It, it is you? you people's decision. Uh, on, on who is going to win. Here is what I think is going to happen. I think that people who watch this video are going to vote for Ollie. I think people who don't are going to vote for Adam. And I think that may lead to an Adam victory because I think more people will vote in the poll than watch the video, then vote in the poll. So are you telling the people to vote for Ollie? That's I'm, no, no, not I'm, very... not, I'm, not, I'm not telling the people to vote for Ollie at all, but I have a feeling that is like, if, if I would say as a viewer of this, if Ollie doesn't win, I think it is uh, it's an unfair, uh, I think it's unjust. Wow. Wow. I think this is the wow. video where we change the voting system, actually. <laughs> to, to, to be a link, or something only that you can get at the end of the video. How do we do that, though? I have no idea. <laughs> no, we'll, do, we'll keep it the same way as, as always. Yeah. Do you want to we post the poll up five minutes before the video goes live? I <laughs> rebooked the Rock and John Cena's journey to WrestleMania 29. And it was very Gosh good. Gosh darn you. And it was very good. And you, it was it was great, yeah. I I like what you did with WrestleMania 30 as yeah, well. Yeah, that was great. Really, really that, good. That, that was a brief stuff, was with... it? <laughs> <laughs> the little bonus, it's Christmas. <laughs> that, that, that's what I think. I think Ollie satisfied the brief and, uh, and did a much better version of what actually happened. I yeah, so that's what we're saying. possibly fair. Adams was better overall by quite, I think, quite some don't, way. You don't have to, you don't have to say that, Ollie. You don't have to say that. But you didn't book the right thing. I did. I could just start booking random <laughs> stuff <laughs> without limitations and come up with something half decent. Well, why didn't I think. you do that, coward? Why didn't you <laughs> experiment with the form? Who's the real coward here? Someone who just doesn't stick to the limitations and the rules? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's, that's fair. fair. That's fair. I, I let the people decide. Well, the it vote is, their is yours. The vote is yours. It is people power is what we have given everyone here. So uh, use the the poll that's in the community tab. We've linked to it in the video description down below. Uh, head on over to PFK's channel if you can't find the link and head to the community tab. And the poll is there. Vote for who you ever, whoever you think. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to Ollie. Don't listen to Adam. Well, listen to Ollie and Adam's actual stories. But don't listen to me. And go with your heart. Go with your gut. Go with your mind. Go with your tongue. And vote wisely. Uh, until then, uh, I've been Luke Owen, D-A-D. That's been Adam Blompier. That's been Ollie Davis. Now it's Fantasy Booking Warfare. Jam that jam, everyone. <laughs>